well. Um, Mm, well, once again, thanks also for the scientific committee for this invitation. And I can add that life is short, uh, ours is long, and friendship is precious, as you said. And I have to talk of a consensus conference on cranioplasty. And the consensus uh, conference was held uh, during ICRAN 2018, the international uh, conference of the Neurotraumatology Committee of WFNS that was held in Naples with a, a nice worldwide participation. And after the steps of uh, recruitment of authors and uh, literature analysis, the um, experts meet in five rooms in Naples where they discuss about ongoing uncertainty. And after, with some delay due to pandemia, uh, we uh, produced the final report and now we are disseminating the results as this lecture. And uh, we discussed it about uh, a lot of areas of ongoing uncertainty, like indication and techniques. All we know, uh, analyzing this elegant paper of Marek Chosnikar published more than 20 years ago, that before cranioplasty, we cannot assist a brain compliance. Meanwhile, after cranioplasty, we can assist a uh, uh, restored brain compliance uh, after infusion tests. So the message is clear. We should close the box to assist a CSF cycle restoring. Not only circulation of the CSF, but we can also assist a restoring of cerebral blood flow. But this is not directly correlated with the uh, clinical outcome. And this is a medical legal issue because if we know that the restorative effect is different from good outcome, uh, we should uh, um, aspect always after cranioplastic uh, improvement of neurological condition. But we can also see uh, different scenarios. For example, this study that observed the patient after the uh, performed cranioplastic after more than one year after the compressive craniectomy, uh, uh, it was assisted a satisfactory improvement uh, even of neurological outcome and of uh, performance, brain performance, but there was no significant difference in uh, brain hemodynamics. So the central question is that hemodynamics and the CSF circulation is connected with the neurological outcome. So the experts in the room that discussed it about indication, there was, agree there was an agreement, high agreement, that uh, to perform a chemoplastic we need absence of medical contraindication and the indication of a cranioplastic should be anatomical reconstruction, physiological restoration, but about the recovery of functional and physiological condition, maybe you can uh, aspect that the cranioplastic should promote the recovery, but is not a uh, sharp indication. And about the techniques in literature are reported several different ways to reconstruct the, uh, the cranium after bone removal, especially to avoid the second surgery of cranioplastic, but are all too anecdotal to have some conclusion in a consensus conference. About material, we know is a high grade of uncertainty. Uh, we can consider autolog bone autologous as the uh, uh, first choice, but we have to also remember that uh, the bone has a high rate of complication in the bone resorption uh, incidents that reach un up to 20%, as demonstrated in these meta-analyses. And some others advocate to the kind of storage, the rate of bone flap resorption, but these meta-analyses demonstrate that uh, the cryopreservation or abdominal pocket has no um, has no impact in terms of infection rate and uh, resorption rate. So until now, we have no uh, ideal material and we need long-term studies. But what, what we know that the um, high rate of complication, uh, despite even uh, material we use it, is connected with bifrontal cranioplastics. So bifrontal cranioplastics is more frequently associated with complication with bone, polymers, metals, and ceramics. And the surgical side infection is the most common 
common complication and uh, is the main reason of uh, replacement of explantation of the uh, cranioplasty. Uh, so about materials, the uh, expert concluded that uh, if we can expect uh, uh, resor resorption if we use uh, the autologous bone. And so in this case, maybe we should prefer an early cranioplastic. Uh, about all the processes in a custom made technique, we need further studies. And uh, with an agreement less than 90%, but higher than 80%, uh, we, uh, we have still an answered question about timing and the storage. A timing, of course, is another uncertain uh, discussed in the room number three. And we should consider that before canoplastic, mainly we assist the three kind of different patients, uh, scavated brain, normal brain, and the brain swelling with or without the uh, enlargement of ventricles. And for sure, these three kind of different patients cannot have the same clinical and surgical timing considerations. In literature, this is my personal meta-analysis, uh, we can assist a huge group of authors with about 2,000 of patients that uh, show it that there is no impact of the timing on complication rate and outcome. Another group of uh, authors with about 1,500 patients uh, report that an early cranioplastic is better than late. But the main problem is that there is not univocal definition of early. Some others report early as when performed uh, in three months, uh, or some others report early cranioplastic when a cranioplastic is performed uh, within one month or within two weeks from cranioplastic. And this is maybe the main problem to have uh, robust evidence by literature. We, not, we do not have robust evidence. And what we understand that a patient should be reconstructed as soon as is possible. And that means when the patient has no brain swelling, has no infection state. So the room number three, uh, decide that uh, with a uh, agree of 100% that clinical condition should drive the timing of cranioplastic. An interesting conclusion in the conference is that the poor neurological uh, status and skin colonization are not a contraindication for cranioplastic. Uh, uh, also in this room, the experts are agreed that when we have a uh, autologous bone graft cranioplastic, we should prefer early cranioplastic. About the finition, the experts suggest uh, um, some uh, univocal definition of ultra early, intermediate, early, and delayed cranioplastic, just to use uh, from now to in the future the same definition to have uh, more robust evidence. And the timing, of course, need future studies. Hydrocephalus, another a well debated uh, issue of cranioplastic, especially post traumatic hydrocephalus, is very difficult to prove uh, by neurological. Uh, uh, examination is difficult to prove by neuroradiological examination. We have no uh, univocal uh, te radiological technique to have a diagnosis, and also difficult to prove with the uh, CSM dynamic test. We do not have a single high specific and high sensitive test, also because we have to remember the Chosnica lesson uh, with the, the CFCF, CBF circulation uh, in open box. Uh, and also in literature, we can also assist some um, not univocal conclusion about the surgical techniques to uh, treat uh, post-traumatic hydrocephalus and cranoplastic. So you see how many statements has been produced by hydrocephalus room about diagnosis. We don't have uh, diagnostic criteria uh, uh, and uh, dynamic uh, um, test criteria. Even uh, we do not uh, have adequate evidence about electrophysiological tests. Uh, and uh, we should also need to have some univocal outcome measure 
to understand if the patient, uh, the outcome of the post-traumatic hydrocephalus. About the uh, statement on surgery, and uh, is uh, the assembly is uh, agreed that maybe um, we should uh, um, we should perform a cranioplastic uh, uh, prior to the definitive CSF diversion, and there is no preference about uh, external ventricular drainage or lumbar drainage uh, to understand if the patient has a hydrocephalus, traumatic hydrocephalus or not. And uh, for sure, um, with an agreement more than 90%, uh, maybe a definitive uh, shunt should be performed after cranioplasty. Pediatric cranoplastic is still a matter of debate. This is how two meta analysis to 2013 uh, and 2019, uh, so um, before and after consensus and the conclusion, the consideration about need of further studies about timing, materials, age are still needed. And the pediatric cranoplastic, unfortunately, is the room where there is the higher grade of disagreement. Uh, the assembly didn't reach agreement about uh, the definition of pediatric population, about the use of the autologous bone, and uh, no agreement about the neuroimaging. So uh, these are the conclusion with the high grade of the um, agreement and is about indication and technique. Uh, it's interesting to note that there is no age limit for reconstruction. And about materials, uh, they concluded that an osteoconductive material should be preferred when you have no available bone. And uh, uh, under three years, the best option for osteoconductive material remains unclear. So there is a, uh, the age that can have an impact on the choose of material. And uh, about the, uh, the timing, also in the pediatric population, the uh, neurological local condition should be stable. And so uh, this is another strong suggestion as the adult population. So the consideration is that we need further studies and uh, to have some more robust evidence and uh, the um, and uh, what is clear that we should perform cranioplasty as soon as is possible when the patient is ready to be reconstructed and uh, uh, study about material timing hydrocephalus is uh, uh, requested requested thank you